Hello and welcome to my review of CloudyFlex 1.3 for the LG G2 D800, the AT&T variant. Um, just want to show you here is CloudyFlex 1.3. This came out on February 14th, 2014, and I am using the stock kernel. However, I did, as usual for these videos, do some tests with custom kernels. Now, one thing I thought about doing this time around is that uh, there are those that might not be familiar with a flex-based widget settings real quick. Um, you're going through sound, you get your sound profiles, the standard affair there, your volumes. Notice there's no linking for the ringtone and notifications. Those are independent of each other at all times. Vibration strength, you can alter the vibration strength or strength there. Uh, quiet mode, just like quiet hours, you have control there. You can put on a schedule, etc. Customize what you want to get through. Very useful. Uh, obviously, you know I'm a fan. Smart ringtone, incoming call vibration, gentle vibration, ringtone with vibration, notification sound, touch feedback. You can enable the sounds. Of course, to turn off the touch sounds because I don't like them. Some people do. Display. Talking about the display, of course, for this video, I have the brightness cranked all the way up. However, usually uh, you'll find me using it at around 60% and then automatic for my testing. And it's bright enough and it adjusts pretty quick. Screen out time, screen off effect, you can change these, preview them. These are all the same ones that you get in the LG based ROM. Auto rotation. Screen mode. Now, here's one that does not work with this ROM, and the reason why is because this is based off the LG Flex, and that phone has an amyloid panel, and this is an LCD panel. So these settings don't do anything. You can change them; nothing changes, and uh, doesn't do anything. Daydream there. You can screensaver that will be on when the phone is asleep or it's docked or it's charging. Font type, I have a few extra fonts in here because I have the LG World application. I'll tell you about that here in just a moment. Font size, and as you can see here, it's the actual text that gives you the size options and not the code. Uh, earlier, FlexBase ROMs had the code there, and you can still figure out what it was, obviously, by going in order. Smart screen, smart video. Front touch buttons, here's where there are some settings that you might find useful. Uh, of course, button combination, colors. Uh, transparent background, uh, swipe the front touch buttons. This is very convenient for one-handed operation. Just swipe it the direction that you want and you'll bring it closer to your fingers. Hide front touch buttons. There are certain games where you might want to hide your front touch buttons. YouTube was not listed in this list, however. Other than display options, really the only other place you're going to notice some changes here in the settings would be multitasking. You got side to side. For those of you that know what that is, it's the ability to just kind of flick three fingers. It puts it over here, and you can put three applications over there. You one, two, and three, and slide between them using three fingers. You get your dual window. Pretty easy. There's your Chrome. Settings are still there. Same fluid, scrolling, etc. No problem. You've seen me advertise that before for flex based ROMs. It works as expected. This ROM is pretty much for those that want a good stock flex base that they can work off of, that they can add to. It's very, very simple, uh, very true to the original flex ROM, and uh, it's very functional, very stable. Talking about the kernel. I did not experience some of the positives that were shared with uh, other users in the forms for the, the, the other kernel options like Dormix or Furnace. With the Dormix, Dormix, D-O-R-I-M-A-N-X, so I guess that's Dermax, Dermix kernel uh, 2.4, what I did notice is that there were some sound issues. Maximum volume was the same was the same volume level as minimum. I'm not sure what happened there, but everything was extremely loud. Uh, and trying to turn your phone down without having to turn on vibrate uh, was next to near impossible uh, with your notifications. It did respond fine in games, but uh, notifications and playing music over the loudspeaker just did not do so at all. And there are some people who are complaining about the speakerphone functionality in this ROM. Speakerphone to note did work just fine for me on the kernels. It was never an issue on the kernels. 
on the furnace kernel, I did notice that there was some lag and a lot of redraw of the launcher. Um, very annoying. Uh, redraw is an issue that I noticed on the original LG G2 ROM, um, and uh, it's, it's annoying. That's all it really is. Uh, it, it happens quick enough, but you see it, and you don't want to see it. Um, and it does do that with the furnace kernel. Stock kernel seems to do much, much better um, in all departments. However, battery life for me, again, it varies from person to person, and my experience with battery life is not the same as other users in the forums. So I'm going to show you what I got and uh, show you the screenshots that I got in my day-to-day -day use. Let me just go ahead and pull those up for you now. Okay, so here we are, 38% after 17 hours and 2 minutes of usage. It says it can be up for another 8 hours expected. You know, that's a good estimate. I use 11% uh, within the last 3 hours of this particular graph. 3 hours and 44 minutes of screen on time. So, <clears throat> close to 4 hours of screen on time and 38%. Not that good. Normally, on an LG Flex-based ROM, I'm getting 10% to 8% draw for every hour of screen on time. When I ran it again, another day of full usage, I got 13 hours and 50 minutes of usage, 37%, with only 3 hours and 34 minutes of screen on time. So pretty consistent with uh, this ROM. And this time I was using the furnace kernel. Benchmarks-wise, I'm going to show you, of course you know what to expect with an LG based ROM, you're going to get good benchmarks because they do build these ROMs to kind of cheat a little bit in the benchmarks and they've come out and they've kind of admitted these OEMs, you know, oh yeah, you know, we we may have cheated a little bit, but uh, the performance of the ROM speaks for itself. Very fluid, very fast, very responsive, and this right here was on Furnace Kernel, you got 19717. Um, as you know, I do use Quadrant Standard as a baseline for benchmarks, it's quick, it's easy, uh, if I keep using it, it's consistent. Um, can it be cheated? Yes. Am I going to cheat it? No. I just have no reason to. I'm not biased towards any ROM in particular. If enough people want to see in 2.2, I can start doing that one as well. Another nice thing about this ROM is that options like QVoice work just fine. Set an alarm for tomorrow at 1 p.m. I don't know if it will actually do it or not. There it goes. No. All right, so that's Q Voice. Obviously, as you see it works surprisingly enough. Uh, close this. Close this. All right. So Q Voice works. Q Remote works, and so does um, the Q Theater. Now, as far as Q Remote goes, uh, I know I usually mention search the forums to find your answer, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you one real quick. Cause a lot of people ask about the remote control and not seeing their devices. If you go into the Google Play Store and download Build Prop Editor, go into Build Prop Editor, it's a free app, change ro.build.target underscore country, change that value to US, reboot the device, and Viola, if you're in the US, you'll have the US devices. If you're in a different country, change it to your country code or your country abbreviation, and again, Viola, you got your devices. Pretty easy to do. Uh, if you're uncertain about it, Google it. You'll find it, I promise you. But that's how you do it. You want to change the ro.build.target underscore country and change that value to US. Because this is an ODEX ROM, again, your uh, flex widget is the actual flex widget. It brings you into that uh, full screen weather uh, information here where you can go to the four day of the day. One thing I wish that they would have done with this widget is if you tap the time, I wish it would take you to alarm clock. It would save you from having to keep an alarm clock icon on the screen. Small inconvenience, and you can use QVoice set an alarm. So that's just me personally and my personal preferences. One thing I like about the Zuper widget is being able to customize all these areas here and to, to open up whatever app it is that you want it to when you touch that area. But the Zuper widget doesn't populate this much of the screen either. The Flex widget compared to the Zuper widget, the Flex widget cut, um, takes up a lot more of the screen real estate there, and it's pretty easy to read. GPS locks and it locks well. Um, it does 
in my perception, take a few seconds longer than in a stock-based ROM from my experience, but I mean, it's minimally, very barely noticeable. Uh, once it locks, it tracks. I've used it in GPS a couple times in testing and never had an issue with the compass or it tracking me, giving me the proper directions, turning the right times, etc. Works well. Free RAM. You got 892. I still have a couple things open in the background. It may have stopped some of those applications there because uh, I didn't have them loaded into the preferences for the, the application. But um, not bad. Normally I'm at 0.9 uh, from a fresh re from re from a fresh reboot with nothing running. Knock on, knock off works, of course. You know because again this is a flex based ROM. Uh, no problems at all. And you get this nice flex uh, lock screen widget here if you want it where normally it responds to tilt. There it goes. Okay. Themes. Themes are in here. Easy to find. It comes with two of the Flex and the LG. However, if you download the LG Smart World, which all you got to do is Google LG Smart World APK, you will find it. I found it no problem, downloaded it, installed it. Uh, that's where I got some of these custom uh, fonts from that I played around to see if they worked, no problem. Uh, you can get themes, keyboard themes, etc. All from this application. Not a whole lot of selection here, but it's not terrible. And uh, this may have been also a location I could have gone to to get real racing because. With this ROM, you will need to do a few things with Exposed. At least I would recommend you do a few things with Exposed. Uh, modules that I definitely recommend with Exposed. Advanced Power Menu. Give yourself the ability to reboot directly into recovery from the Power Menu. App settings to change your DPI on your phone. Um, you have to change the camera DPI back to 480 if you're going to change the rest of the DPI. G2 Exposed. You get a lot of customization options in G2 Exposed. In my opinion, it's a must-have for any LG-based ROM. Um, really, 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 really lets it make it your own. And the Play Store fixes. There were a lot of applications that I could not get from the Play Store when I installed this ROM. I uh, enabled that. And more specifically, <clears throat> I reported the fake density as 480, and I enabled the No Restrictions patch. Curiously enough, that did give me the ability to uh, click the install button for Real Racing. However, it would not download. It gave me an error every time. All I did again was Google search. I Google searched Real Racing APK, downloaded it, installed it, and um, that was it. From there, it updated. A2DP, A2DP worked just fine for me. Um, the only thing I noticed, uh, well, first of all, let me say that it does work well with my Ford Touch. They have text messaging support, no problem. Metadata, no problem. However, Google Play Music recently updated, and when it did, it seems like it takes a little bit longer for it to send the song information to the head unit on both my Ford Touch and the Uvo unit. It seems like it takes a couple seconds, so you'll see no artists, no song information, but then it'll populate. However, if you're using the music player, or I tested the Sony Walkman player, uh, it does send that metadata no problem first time every time real quick. Text messaging, of course, does not work with the Kia Uvo. No big surprise there, but at least you get your metadata on both head units, and the text messaging works with the My4 Touch uh, very, very well. Um, so I didn't have any problems with A2DP. One of the other nice things about this ROM is the ability to, there's four different options you can download in Flash and Recovery to customize this ROM. If you're looking at this, you'll notice uh, if you've ever used a flex-based ROM, there's no borders around these icons. Whereas most of the icons have this black border like you see on the app tray there. That's because that is one of the many customizations that you can flash from the um, XDA forms for CloudyFlex. It's called Icon Border Remover, and I like it. I am a fan. It was very easy. Download it, go into your custom recovery, flash it. Done. Reboots, and it's done. Um, there are some other changes you can make. There is the ability to change your navigation bar down here. You got 24 by 24, 30 by 30, or 39 by 39. You can uh, transparent navigation handler and a transparent weather. So if I was on the LG base theme, 
me just show this to you right quick. Here's the LG base theme. Hold on one moment. We're going to reboot into recovery. As I've said before, I always recommend having a good backup for a working base. I've already done that myself. So we're going to go ahead and flash this transparent weather. And just for the heck of it for the video, I'll go ahead and do the transfer the, the transparent Navi handler as well. Alright, we'll reboot the system. And that's what you get. You get this transparent. Oh, this widget here becomes transparent. Let me change this background though so that you can see it a little bit better. I'll just use this one. So there you go. So it, it, so you can see it's transparent here. Um, that's all that does, and of course you see down here the navigation bar is transparent. So those are two other little um, modifications that he provides for you uh, that work pretty simply, and of course transferring back is no problem. Pretty easy stuff. Reasons to flash this ROM. You like a ROM installer, you like being able to uh, customize what applications you want installed with the phone. You do have some selection there as you saw with my installation video. Um, it's about 120 extra megs, 130 extra megs than in another flex based ROM. However, um, that extra information or that extra data or the optional applications that you can install or not install and the other kernels because it is a one ROM for them all um, and he did add the Sprint and the uh, Verizon variant when he released the 1.3 I have actually installed the Sprint and although it did take some time for it to activate and uh, for data to work it did eventually work it just took a little bit of time so um, no problems with the Sprint version working as a quick reminder before I conclude the video though, I did have some problems initially with text messaging. Uh, I could receive but not send text messaging initially when I installed this ROM. What I had to do was reinstall the ROM again. Don't wipe the cache, don't wipe the Dalvik, just go back in, do another install with the ROM installer, install it for your variant. After that it rebooted and it worked. There are others in the forums that reported similar that they reflashed it a second time and it fixed whatever problem they were having. So uh, I recommend definitely if you boot it the first time, you let it sit for 10 minutes and you're still having some problems, just reflash it again and then give it 10 more minutes to set in. Um, I kid you not, but it works. Remember as always, clean flash before you report any problems and don't report anything that might be related to exposed installer or to custom applications that you've installed because the developers are only concerned in the development forms with their particular ROM. What's crashing, uh, what's not, and uh, performance wise, what's going on with it so they can make the fixes. That is my review of CloudyFlex. If there's anything that you feel like I did not cover, uh, please comment below. I'll be more than glad to go back and uh, check that the next time I make it back around to CloudyFlex. Who knows, it might be at 1.5 or 1.6 by then, but I will come back and keep up. Thank you.